we have a new product. We have the NF Dot Mini micro soldering pen, and it looks something like this. I've been testing this product for the past four months, and I absolutely love it. Some viewers on the channel, they were asking, what's that tip that you're using? A very fine tip, and I did not mention anything about it until we had the final product, and we have the product right over here, right now. Everything has been customized to our specifications, including the firmware, and I absolutely love that pen. What's the purpose of having a pen like this? If you already have a soldering station, why have a pen like this? Most soldering stations, they have two handles, the C115 handle and the 210 handle. And a lot of times you have a big tip on your soldering iron. Let's say I have a welder station and let's say I have a big tip, I'm working on a big component and then I find myself that I need a smaller tip to work on a micro component, a 1005 component or 201 component. And that's where this pen comes in handy. I do not have to change tips on this anymore. I do not have to change handles. So I'm working with a big tip, I'm soldering whatever, a big component, and then I find myself needing to solder something small. I pick up the NF.mini soldering pen, and I'll just work on that micro component on the board. This is portable. This pen does not come with a bulky station. It does not take up room. All you need to do is plug in the provided long USB-C cable, and it comes with the QC 3.0 adapter, and it's very important to use QC 3.0 because this pen can handle 9 volts at 2 amps. Let's say you have a power supply that supports 5 volts at 2 amps, then you're not going to get the most out of that pen. The maximum temperature will be reached when you are using 9 volts at 2 amps. And the good thing is everything is inside that package. The package looks something like this, and it comes with the soldering iron pen. And the finish is amazing. Look at the finish on this pen. And you can see the label, NF.mini, Northridge Fix Mini. And when you turn the pen on, you're going to be greeted with the Northridge Fix dot mini logo on the screen. And you have three buttons on the front here. You can increase the temperature by pressing on the plus sign. The button feels good when you press it. Everything is quality. You can feel the quality on this pen. And then you have the minus to decrease the temperature. And then you have the press to activate pen. So sometimes when you pull the pen and you want to use it, it activates by itself but sometimes it goes to sleep. It thinks that you're not using the pen. So you can press on the button to activate that pen. Those are the only three buttons in the front. Extremely simple, very, very easy. Let me quickly show you what's inside the case so you know. You have the soldering pen. You have one, two, three tips, and the tips are labeled as NF Mini 15K, and then you have the 15I, and you have 15J. Let me show you how the tips look like. But before I do so, you have the QC 3.0 adapter, 9 volts at 2 amps, and you have a very high quality cable. I'm not talking about a cheap cable. You're going to feel it from the time that you touch that cable, you're going to feel its quality. And the cable is long. It's not a short cable, so you have more than enough length to be far away from this charger. I'm currently using our 8-port charging station and not this one here because the charging station supports up to 12 volts, so I'm okay here and I have the cable plugged in to our QC 3.0 port. But in case you don't have this, you can use the one that's provided inside the packaging, and you should be all good. So everything that you need is inside this box. And then last but not least, you have the soldering pen stand. It looks something like this. It's very minimal, and honestly, I did not have any say about how we wanted this to look like. We wanted to keep the packaging to a minimal, and we did not have an option to go for something bulky like what I'm using here. I'm using a Weller stand, and I would rather use something like this. I'm not using the stand that comes with it, so just consider it as an extra. I did try it, and I'm more comfortable when I'm able to stick the pen on a stand like this. I'll take it out. The cable is going out from the back, and I'll stick it in. If I want to put it on my bench like this, the pen may end up slipping or being knocked over, so I'm not a fan of those stands, but it does come with the package, and just consider it as an extra. But if you have an extra stand, you can use that or you can buy one for this pen. Right now, if you look at my bench here, I have three stands. One for the hot tweezers. I got it right here. And one for the Weller soldering iron. And now I have one for the NF Mini pen. So I have three stands right here. Now, how effective is the pen? That's why I've been testing this for the past four months. I did not just test it once or twice. I've been constantly working with that pen for the past couple of months, and I can tell you it's very effective. It's not effective when working with big components. This is a mini pen. This one is not used to work on large components. You would use your big tip, your big handle, 
because big tip means more heat transfer. Smaller tip, less heat transfer. And this here is the smaller tip, the 115 size handle. So let's take a look. Let's open up the pen. Let's go under the microscope. And we're going to plug the USB-C cable. And the first thing you are greeted with is the NF.mini logo. Okay. Right now it says no tool because we do not have a tip installed. As soon as we put the tip in, then we're going to be able to use it. And then if we go here, we have the plus and minus buttons. And of course, you have the press to activate button, which is on the front here. So let's put this one back. We do not want to open a new one. We already have one on our bench here. And we're going to be working with the knife tip. I'm not going to test all the tips, but I'll show you how the tips look like. All right, so let's see. If you look here, we have the 15J tip. And look at how fine this tip is. It's amazing. And like I said, this is used for micro soldering work. I'm talking about micro soldering, dealing with 105 size component, dealing with 201 size components, even 402 size components. So do not use this to work on 1206 components. Not enough heat transfer to do the job. You use your bigger soldering iron. On my bench here, I have a Benz key fob motherboard. And just look at the size of the tip you are able to get to very tight areas. You can solder each pin with this tip. And that's one of the tips here. And then the second tip, we have the conical and we have the knife. And this one is the knife tip and it looks something like this. Now I love the knife tip because I can make use of this sharp end here, or I can make use of the whole tip so I can use more surface area of the tip to get more heat, or I can just go like this. I can get to small components or to big components, and we'll work with the knife tip because I feel like the knife tip is a multi-purpose tip. You can do everything with the knife tip. And then finally, we have the conical tip, and the conical tip looks something like this. Let's grab this board right here. Those components are considered big, right? But the Benz key fob is a two-layer board. So it takes less heat transfer to work with those components. If you are trying to desolder this component off a video card, then good luck. Even with your biggest soldering iron, it's going to take time because the board is going to absorb all the heat. So we have a Benz key fob motherboard here. And let's go ahead and use the soldering iron and see how it does. We can apply some flux on this big joint on the button and see the power of this mini soldering iron pen. Okay, so let's say, look at this, it just liquefied solder, and look at that nice joint. What I love about the tip is solder sticks onto the tip. Unlike the cheap tips that you find in the market where you cannot stick solder onto the tip. Now look at this, I'm able to liquefy solder on that joint and that's a big joint. And the reason is I'm using the knife tip. I'm able to make use of the whole surface area of the knife tip. I can use the knife tip like this. I can use it like this. And look, I'm able to liquefy solder like that. I'm able to actually remove the whole component like that because heat transferred onto the component and it desoldered the other end of the resistor. That's the power. That's how much heat this soldering iron provides. The pen is small in size, but it generates a lot of heat. So we're going to grab that component and we're going to go like this. and then we can grab that component and go like this and just look at that joint. Let's apply some flux here and let's say I want to apply leaded solder onto those pads. So look at the way solder sticks onto the tip. You find a lot of cheap tips in the market and you think, oh, that tip is cheap. I'm going to buy it from whatever. And then you find out that the tip does not hold solder properly. Just look at the way the tip holds solder. That's a good tip. That's a very good tip. And that's what I look for when testing for good tips. Let's apply just a tiny bit of solder here. And then we're going to go over the pins like this. And we'll do the side here. Then we can go like this and just look at the way the soldering look on those pads. Amazing. So let's switch over 
to a multi-layer Nintendo Switch motherboard and see how it does. Maybe we can apply solder on the battery pins. Let's say we have the battery connector placed over those pins and we want to solder that battery connector. Let's see how it does. And then we can maybe solder and desolder some components. I just want to be as practical as possible and that's what I have been doing for the past four months. Just using this pen practically. Right, so let's apply solder here and look at how solder sticks onto the tip. And then I'm going to apply solder here. You probably cannot see very well from the glare, but I just applied leaded solder on all those pins. And then let's, for example, say that we want to desolder this component. With the knife tip, I can actually go like this and we should be able to desolder that component. Okay, you see? The component is gone. Now let's finalize the video by maybe going over a chip, just desolder it, apply leaded solder, and solder it back. We're going to put it on the side. Apply flux, of course, because flux is your friend. And now we're going to apply solder on those pins. I mean, look at how precise that tip is. If I apply more, I can. And that's only one of the tips. I'm just showing you how the knife tip works, but you can use the bent or the conical. And now we're going to solder that chip back, and soldering the chip does not require the use of the soldering pen, but let's put it back. And that's the power of this pen. Nothing fancy, just a small tiny pen, no bulky stations. It does not take room on your bench. What I would suggest is to get a soldering iron stand like this off eBay or Amazon and just stick it like this and it will make an excellent addition to your workbench. You do not have to keep switching handles or switching tips. Use this for micro soldering components and use your other big tip for bigger jobs. And that's it, we're gonna end the video right here. The pen will be posted on our website by later today or tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.